Today we are checking out one of the coolest new games or new tools for the Nintendo 64, which has the idea of bringing Mario Maker to Super Mario 64. And it gets more interesting when you realize that you can actually use this thing on a real Nintendo 64 console, not just with emulation. That's what we're gonna check out here today. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. The setup process was pretty easy and uh, essentially you get the Mario 64 ROM, which I'm sure you can figure out where to get that one from. And then you need the patch file, a BPS file that is hosted over on romhacking.com or gamebanana.com, which I'll link to an entire setup guide for this down below in the description. Once you have both of those, I went to the ROM hacking patching site that they have set up and you just upload your ROM file, you upload the patch, and then it'll spit back out a file to you, which I did rename Mario Builder 64, and I just moved it over to the SD card that I popped into my EverDrive, which then went into my console. And that's pretty much the entire setup process. It's pretty easy. So I loaded up the file on the Nintendo 64 console with that EverDrive, and I was greeted with an author name. So I put in just spawn, went past that, and then I was at the main menu. So from here, I I decided to go through and just take a look at some of the options for how to control the game and how to set things up when it comes to the SD card, all of which is pretty straightforward. Now, the controls will take some getting used to because, I mean, look at the Nintendo 64 controller. It's not exactly, we'll say, traditional, but I think they've done a pretty good job adapting a level editor that would probably be more at home to a keyboard or a mouse to a controller with a limited number of inputs. So when you go through and you set up your level settings, you can pick your mode, which I just had vanilla Super Mario 64. You can choose how large you want the area to be that you set this up in. And then your template, which I just went with grassy, you pick like lava, desert, that sort of thing. You enter your level name and it drops you into a blank slate, which it did pretty quick. Like the load times here are, are pretty snappy, which I mean, you'd expect for something that's cartridge and flash based and it's not coming off of a CD, but still this is, this is exactly new hardware we're dealing with here. The controls did take some getting used to. So the way this works is you use the C buttons in order to raise or lower where your cursor is or sort of the, the level. You can go pretty high up into the air and then you can actually drop even looks like kind of below the ground and then that sort of resets you back up to the top. Uh, the C left and right does rotate things and you also use the d-pad to zoom in a bit now you do have l and r which allows you to cycle through your bottom hotkey or bar down here and then z will allow you to rotate and b will delete stuff a allows you to confirm and start placing blocks in the area and i know that does sound a bit complicated i guess now that i'm even hearing it out loud it doesn't sound as straightforward as as it should uh, but they are working again with the nintendo 64 controller and as i played around here and there in the editor it did become a bit easier to sort of place blocks rotate the camera zoom in and out so just as you spend some time with it it will get easier but of course, if you're using a keyboard or something or just any other controller, it's going to be touch and code depending on your own configuration. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm the most creative person when it comes to level editing, that sort of thing. But I did go through some of the options just to see what we have here at like a basic level. And it's fairly simple. At the bottom, you can see all the different icons here. We have like trees and you can lay down coins. You can play around with the landscape with different bricks that you can change the textures. So some more friendly than others. For example, I put lava tiles down, I put some quicksand down, and yes, they will hurt you or give you a game over screen if you stand on them for too long. Basically, I just made a platform with a, with a sloped grassy edge so I could kind of run across them and see it all in really in action here when I go in and test it. I threw a couple of Goombas down just to see how they'd react to me. I put some stars in the area. The mesh or steel wall here that sort of gives you that fence looking effect. And then I played around with the toolbox menu that you get to by pressing start where I can go through and change the theme, the skybox effects. You can play around with the, the different music that's playing from albums and songs. Uh, you can have it be a full water level if you'd like. You can save your level, of course, and you can then jump in and start running around to test it. And I'll admit, this has been pretty seamless considering what we're really looking at here is just a mod or a ROM hack for Mario 64. It is very impressive stuff to see this, and the Mario 64 community continues to amaze me. Like, really, the fact that this game has stood the test of time and gone this far to where people are 
editing the ROM to turn into an entire Mario Maker level experience is really, really cool stuff. But as I mentioned, I'm really just not a very creative person when it comes to level editing. However, the cool thing about this is we can go and just get levels that are being made at this time by the community. You do have to go off of the Nintendo 64, obviously you have to go online, but you can go to this website that they have set up currently and just start checking out levels and downloading them, which when I went there, they have a couple at the top that I guess are featured. So I decided to just download all of those, which, uh, which included things like, what's this, Spindrift Yard, Snowscape Paradise. There was one named like an asylum that looked like a kind of a, a Bowser castle that you're going into. When you click on it, they have like different ratings. They tell you how many people have played it. There's some comments there, which you can sign up and leave some, I guess, kind of as a way to review. After downloading them, I double checked on the SD card and the game had made a folder where you just drag and drop these things. In fact, as soon as I loaded the game up and went to play, they just had all four of them here. So why don't we pop into a couple of them and see what we have. We'll start with Snowscape Paradise. And this is a game that's, well, it's certainly testing, we'll say, the Nintendo 64 hardware. This is something I noticed with a lot of these custom levels that were built out completely. The Nintendo 64 is definitely not designed to deal with most of them and I understand many people or at least the majority of people are probably going to be playing these different levels in emulators where it'll handle it perfectly fine you won't be dealing with these frame rates in the teens but still I just thought it'd be interesting to see how the Nintendo 64 itself would deal with it and it's not exactly great that said the level is pretty interesting. Uh, there, of course, have different towers that you scale up, which isn't very easy with the frame rate this low. But I managed to at least get to the top of one and grab the star. And then looking over, I realized they have an, a very complicated setup on the other side that would probably not go well for me. So I just jumped off the top and moved over to the Asylum level, which... Yeah, test the Nintendo 64 even more. And this one looks v looks very intricate. As I'm going through, I, I run into what looks like kind of a boss here with a big bob -omb, King bob or whatever. And then I go through the basement and it's just Bowser is down here. Okay, okay. so I pick him up, try to throw him. Of course, the fire hits me and it just uh, doesn't work out. But hey, a really cool idea for a level and one that definitely brings the Nintendo 64 console to its knees. Next up, we are over to Spin Drift Yard. And some of these levels are marked as easy, but I don't necessarily think that's a, a bad thing. See, I, I feel like most people, when they build out a level, they're trying to make it very difficult. Sometimes I think it's more fun to have a level that doesn't just completely test you on every single phase, and it's just fun to go through and feels genuinely creative. In this case, Spin Drift is, uh, is kind of that. There's a lot of areas where you'll jump on top of an enemy and obviously spin upwards in order to scale and climb these large mountainous areas, and that, that's fun enough. I, I feel like with something like this, particularly there is a bit more creativity when it comes to just trying to make it more interesting without making the platforming where you're like gripping the controller super super hard and they have these little blue dinosaurs running around so that's pretty fun oh i forgot to mention in this version of mario 64 that they patched in it does also have rumble enabled so if you have a rumble pack plugged into your controller it will at least shake when you're doing things like like uh, larger jumps hitting different enemies i know not everyone is is necessarily excited for the controller start rumbling in a more precise precise platformer like Mario 64, but if you've never experienced it, it, it is kind of fun because we had a Japanese version of the game that I believe had Rumble enabled, but not necessarily in the US, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, I eventually scaled the top, jumping between these different poles, and grabbed the star. So now... We're on to the last one, that being Rocky Royal Valley. And this one I ran around just kind of exploring a bit and realized when I got to the bottom, it looked like they kind of pulled an idea from Mario Odyssey where you have the bullet bill that'll, that'll come out of the wall and chase you and can crash into things and make new pathways and stuff. So that's sort of the thing that I, I like to see here, just adding elements that we see from current or other Mario games into Mario 64. I mean, just this whole experience has been a lot of fun, and it does feel like there is a ton of potential here on the table with something like a Mario Maker being injected in the Super Mario 64, because the community, of course, is very driven, we'll say, for this game, very active, and I feel like there are a lot of ideas that can pop up now since 
editing levels will be significantly easier with this level editor. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Mario Builder 64. I recommend checking it out if you're interested as it is just a, a free ROM hack that you can download and apply for yourself. And you'll probably get a better experience on an emulator using your PC and give you a chance to edit and play around with levels in Mario 64. Something I hope that Nintendo does attempt in the future, a 3D Mario Maker, because it seems like there is a ton of potential here with just Mario 64. Think about if they expand it to all these other 3D Mario games they've made in the past. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.